You've probably heard of soldiers lighting fires with flint, steel, or even dry twigs. But there was once a time when a simple razor blade became a survival lifeline in the mud, the cold, and the relentless rain of World War II. Picture a soldier in the European theatre, soaked to the bone, trying to get a flame going to heat his rations or dry his socks. Matches? Soaked. Flint? Missing. But inside his kit, a small, ordinary-looking razor blade and a piece of chocolate wrapper foil, that's all he needed to start a fire, even in pouring rain. This wasn't a fluke. It was an ingenious hack, born from wartime necessity and field improvisation, turning a grooming tool into a life-saving ignition source. And the method behind it still works today if you understand the science and the conditions that make it possible. Let's break down how the WW2 razor blade became one of the most overlooked but powerful fire-starting tools ever carried by a soldier, and how you can replicate it in the field just like they did 80 years ago. How a razor blade became more than just a shaving tool. During the Second World War, soldiers carried standard-issue double-edged razor blades, often made of high-carbon steel with a thin, precise edge. These blades were part of daily hygiene kits, but as the war dragged into brutal weather and unpredictable conditions, troops, especially in Europe and the Pacific, found ways to repurpose everything. The humble razor blade became a hidden multi-tool. High carbon steel, when exposed to a current and moisture, reacts aggressively. In the field, soldiers discovered that the metal could generate enough heat to ignite dry tinder if used with the right combination of battery current and conductive foil. This wasn't theory. It was field practice. In fact, by 1944, survival training manuals for downed airmen included instructions on using available metals and electric current for emergency ignition. The razor blade was the perfect candidate, compact, conductive, and sharp enough to focus heat at a single point. The chemistry behind the heat why it works even in wet conditions. Starting a fire in rain is one of the hardest field challenges even today. The advantage of the razor blade method is that it doesn't rely on friction or sparks. It relies on electrical resistance. When you connect a razor blade between two terminals of a low voltage battery, say a 1.5 or 3 volt source with foil or wire, the thin metal edge begins to heat rapidly due to current resistance. Within seconds, the blade becomes hot enough to ignite fine tinder, even damp material, because the heat is generated at the molecular level, not from an open flame. So, the real key here is the reaction of the carbon steel blade under current. You see, the carbon impurities in the steel actually increase resistance, which creates these concentrated hotspots. Now, if you combine that with the reflective conductive foil, often scavenged from cigarette packs or rations wrappers, you've got yourself a makeshift circuit that's capable of producing ignition temperatures somewhere around 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. That's more than enough to dry and light shredded cloth, birch bark, or even, well, damp paper. In short, while rain might kill your matches, it simply can't stop chemistry. Now, let's take a look at how soldiers actually built this fire-starting setup out in the field. Here's how it was done, step by step, according to field accounts and post-war survival documentation. First, a soldier would strip the foil lining from a chocolate bar 
or cigarette pack, both of which were rather common rations. That foil became the conductor, you see. Next, he'd find a small power source, often the battery from a field flashlight or radio. The razor blade would then be connected between two strips of foil, creating a closed circuit when both ends touched the battery terminals. The soldier would then place a thin piece of tinder, maybe dry cloth fibre, shavings of rope, or even just the edge of a bit of paper, directly on the heated portion of the blade. Within seconds, the metal would glow faintly and begin to smoulder the tinder, which could then be coaxed into flame. It wasn't flashy. It didn't spark like flint. But it worked, in rain, snow and fog, when almost nothing else did. And, you know, it's worth noting that this wasn't always part of official training. Much of it spread informally through units, as veterans shared tips, learned through trial, error, and necessity. By late in the war, airmen and ground troops alike had adopted these tricks as part of their unspoken survival playbook. How you can apply this today as a survivalist or historian? This technique isn't just historical trivia. It's a powerful, practical skill. If you ever find yourself in the wild without matches or a lighter, and you have access to a steel blade and a small battery, you can recreate the same method. Here's how to do it safely today. Take a carbon steel razor blade or even a small utility blade, attach it between two thin wires or strips of foil, and connect those to a 9-volt battery. Lay a small piece of tinder on the edge of the blade, and, you know, just watch for heat build-up. Once it smoulders, transfer the ember to a larger tinder bundle and blow gently until it catches. Even in damp conditions, it's far more reliable than relying on friction-based fire-starting tools, you know. If you're a reenactor, collector, or field historian, this experiment is also a fascinating way to connect with the lived experience of World War II soldiers. It shows how survival wasn't just about issued gear. It was about improvisation, intelligence, and the ability to see new uses in ordinary tools. That mindset, more than any gadget, is what kept men alive in the mud and snow. Why this method still deserves attention today? In an era of ferro rods and magnesium strikers, the World War II razor blade fire starter remains one of the simplest, most ingenious survival hacks ever discovered. It represents the kind of field innovation that defined the soldiers of that generation. Using what they had, not what they wished they had. And in many ways, it's a lost art. The next time you're packing a survival kit, slide a high-carbon razor blade into it, not for shaving, but as a nod to the ingenuity of those who fought, survived, and adapted under the harshest conditions. It might just save your life, or at least your dinner, when the weather turns against you. If you found this story useful and worth preserving, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this video with someone who loves real history, not the watered-down version. Every tool, every trick, every forgotten skill has a story. And here we bring them back to life, one piece of iron, grit, and survival at a time.